Welcome to the Project Manager Financial Planning with version 13 of CA Clarity PPM course brought to you by Digital Celerity and I'm your instructor Nolan Eidsmo. Before we get started I would just like to do a quick introduction of myself. Again I'm Nolan Eidsmo, the instructor for this course and like most of the consultants at Digital Celerity I have a long time experience with project management, program management, project management offices, and also with the Clarity application. I go back to the days before Clarity was named Clarity and from the original time that Clarity added financial management into its application. Now enough about me, now we'll get into the course material. First, Let's take a look at the course purpose and objectives. Basically, what we want to do is give you the clarity, project, financial planning, knowledge, and skill you need to do your project financial planning within your project or projects. Once we're done with this course, you'll have a very good understanding of financials within Clarity and how to do within your project, do the project cost plans, project budget plans, and benefit plans. And we also want you to understand the various ways that you can develop those financial plans, either manually or utilizing and leveraging your project schedule and the resources both labor and non-labor that you have assigned to tasks within those schedules. And I have a comment about the training and that is that the content that we use in the course may be different than the content that you have uh, enabled at your company. The financial management design within Clarity is very configurable and so it can be different from company to company and it will be different from what we use and go through in this course. However, the fundamental concepts that are being taught in this course will apply to what you have installed for Clarity in the way that it is designed. It's just that some of the data elements that you choose might be different and we'll point those out as we go through the course where differences can occur and how that can impact you. Here is the outline for the course. In the first four modules, we're going to get into the fundamentals of financial planning in Clarity. We'll look at resources, labor, and non-labor, how those are priced using a matrix, what we have to do in the projects to financially enable the project. So that's the first four modules. Then in Module 5, this will be the key part of the course, we'll get into project financial planning. Here in Module 5, we'll go through the three financial plans. We'll be creating cost plans, budget plans, and benefit plans. And then in addition to that, we'll take a look at uh, financial summaries, which is also called simple budgeting. And then finally, in Module 6 and 7, we'll look at, at getting actual costs into the financial plans. In Module 6, the non-labor transaction entry process of how we get those costs into the plans. And then uh, and in the Module 7, we'll look at timesheets and also the posting process that's required in order to move those actual costs into your financial plans. Now one last thing before we get into the actual course content and that is to do the course we need several things. First we need the training book and the training book can either be provided to you in a PDF or it can be downloaded from the LMS site if that's what you're using. Also there is a course exercise book and again that is in a PDF uh, form and can be downloaded from the site. And then in order to do the exercises, you need access to Clarity PPM. From Digital Celerity, there are some delivery methods that include a Clarity system to do the exercises with, 
or it might be that you need to provide your own Clarity system to do those exercises. In any case, we do demo the exercises in each module. So there's some benefit to be gained without even that last one, the Clarity PPM access. Okay, now before getting into the detail, let's take a look at financial planning at the big picture of it, the context of financial planning within Clarity. What we want to understand is how it all works together. And to do that, we first start by looking at the financial tra transactions and the structure of those transactions, which is the important point, the structure of transactions. And then how do all these parts work together, the pieces within the structure, how do they all fit together um, from a project management standpoint in project planning to financial planning. So let's start by first taking a look at the structure of a transaction. This displays the structure of a transaction. Transactions can't be just entered into Clarity. They have to be entered into Clarity within a certain context and a certain structure. And when you look at this stream of bits that are in this transaction that make up a transaction, we see that the first five parts deal with elements within a project, things that project managers are used to, the project, the tasks that are in the projects, the resources that are assigned to tasks in the project, the date that a uh, hours and uh, for a resource are estimated on, and then that the the item is etc or hours for that particular task. So we have from a project standpoint, a project, a task, a resource that, uh, assigned to the task the dates that, that those hours apply and the total hours for that resource on that task on that project. And then the transaction picks up other information based on these first five items. So the resource information, the resource ID, the person assigned to the task to do the work, then um, the system will pick up the financial attributes from the properties of the resource. And it'll also do the same from the properties of the project, the project financial properties. It'll use this then in pricing out each transaction using the uh, rate matrix. Now let's look at how all these pieces work together. As a project manager, we plan projects. And in doing that, we, we start at the project level, and in Clarity, we begin with a project identification, a project shell. And in that project, we then plan tasks, work breakdown structure. And once we have the tasks, we assign resources to those tasks. And with those resources, we assign ETCs. So these first four blocks on this diagram correspond to the project section that we just talked about in the transaction structure diagram. So here we have four blocks showing the information development flow in building a project and the information for the project. So when those first four items for the project are done, then they can be run through the rate matrix and then with through the rate matrix, they pick up the cost and they can go flow into the cost plan. So now by leveraging all the project information through the rate matrix, we can then just build a cost plan where we haven't done anything other than translate the project schedule plan into a cost plan. And then we actually charge um, actual costs into this cost plan and the project plan through timesheets. And those time 